Okay, hi guys. So um, we're going through this, so make sure you grab your copy of this with, as you, we go through the videos. I'll give you a whole range of tips, okay? So today we're looking at managing um, medical conditions in children. Now, medical conditions can be far and wide. You know, you, you may have a child with uh, diabetes or you may have a child at risk of anaphylaxis. So they're ones that we're pretty we're pretty well um, informed about those sorts of things, just as a community and as a sector. But there's a whole range of medical conditions that may come your way. So you might get a child that is on a feeding tube, or you may have a child that's undergoing some chemo or radio, uh, radio radiation therapy. You may have um, a child with a particular eating disorder or... Um, like the list goes on. Whatever can happen to a human body happens to children. You may, might get a child with um, cystic fibrosis or there's a whole lot of things that can happen. So it's not like we can sit here and go through every single disease or ailment or condition that a, that a child may have, whether that's a congenital condition that they were born with or sometimes children acquire um, medical medical um, management they may be involved in a car accident there's a whole a whole lot of things can go wrong so first things first if you get a child with a medical condition then you want some kind of supporting documentation from a medical practitioner a licensed medical practitioner so that's not the lady on the corner that's you know no none of that it's a licensed medical practitioner that will give you some guidance as to what that diagnosis is because you're taking responsibility for that child once you get some kind of confirmation from the the medical practitioner then best practice would be to sit down with that family and come up with an arrangement now if we use the child with a feeding tube for an example you might find that a very unpleasant task to change that feeding tube or to do certain things for children. So you've got to work that through a little bit. So what does that look like? Do you, is it just a case of you needing further training in order to change or clean or do, if, if the child were to do something with it that you would know how to manage that feeding tube? So do you need some training? I would most likely say yes. If I had a child come to me that I'd never done anything like that before, then I would, yes, I would like some training. That training should be at the expense of the family, not yourself, ideally. They're, they're doing it for, for you so that you can um, provide the right level of care that that child needs. Um, and you need to have a plan what goes wrong, who makes what decisions. So let's just say the child's, oh, I don't, you know, I want this out today. I want this out today. Well, you know, what do I do about this? So you're not making, or you're, you're not making that decision or you have authority to make certain decisions. So that's all got to be in the medical management plan, how that's going to work. If something should go wrong, how are you going to manage the condition within that? So let's say, with a medical management plan, you've got a, a feeding tube and you, you would definitely have some kind of apparatus that would go along with that. And what if you had to evacuate? What happens with that child? And what are the what, what else do you need to take? So let's just say you need to evacuate, you take any apparatus that you need to take with you. But what if you're waiting for emergency services to do whatever and you're at your assembly point and you may be at your assembly point for an hour or so until um, either children's parents come or you're, it's safe to go back into your property, those sorts of things. So with your medical management plan, you've got to think about those sorts of things. You've also got to think about disposal. So um, with some kind of medical waste and injections are, are one of those. So if, if a child is capable and authorised by their family and their doctor to administer their own medication and a lot of di diabetics will and they learn very early on how to manage that so there are many children that are competent in administering their own medications um, so you would need to what does that look like if you're really uncomfortable with that what does that look like um, uh, what goes if something goes wrong what does that look like and again if you've got a child on insulin then it's administ that's administering their own medication and you have to do an emergency evacuation what would that look like for that child so you would need to grab the insulin you would need to grab maybe enough insulin or something you might need to take some lollies with you or something in case again you are at that assembly point and you may be at that assembly point for an hour or more until families um, come along okay now i talk all the time about um, pieces of legislation and things that you need to manage and be really aware of and i've got my little bomb friend so my bomb friend 
he will he lets us know when there are fines related to this so if you don't manage your medical management well like you don't have the right policies in place you don't have the right authorizations in place those sorts of things that's where fines under the legislation lie so so this is a good one now there's a whole list there for educators so that you know what you're responsible for and what you need to do um, because dealing with children with medical conditions you, you don't want to be taking on a liability for, for too much you've got to have shared decision making so you know what you can and can't do and should you be faced with something you know who to contact and get any help yes all right wonderful okay i will see you in the next one see ya bye